All right, folks. Well, here we go. Game number two, EG versus Onyx. You can see the odds have changed as they fluctuate throughout the series. It is now an 8.5 payout if Onyx find a way to bring this back. Of course, we've also got the signed NIP jersey as Whoa. well as the new Juggernaut Blade Form Legacy Arcana up Whoa. for grabs. That button is below the Twitch channel. I think it's a Gleam link. And uh, you can you can find all sorts of ways to sign up and get yourself that part particle EG crazy right. juggernaut. Great lore in that set. Oh, Brad. really? Yeah. Well, I'd love to hear it about sometime. The lore. No, you tell me. I'll tell you about the Dota 1 lore, and we'll see how it compares with your made-up lore. All right, check out <laughs> the lore for the juggernaut. His helmet got split, Radiant team. and then oh, a no. dragon came out. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally the lore. Okay, in Dota that 1. Is wow. as <laughs> they stopped as trying they years got. ago. A dragon that came is, out. That is literally is jugger. It says that his ancestors' spirits came out. Is oh, he a monkey dragon? king got through. No, monkey king. No. Got through. Monkey king is through. So in Dota oh, one, his my. name was Unero, right? He was a lost blade master, the last of his kind, actually, mm -hmm. uh -huh. who lived in the uh, in the Grand. You, uh, you were probably a little over your that's a little lore over knowledge, but yeah, he was just the last blade master. So. Now he's a dragon. <laughs> yes, he literally <laughs> just a dragon creaking. man. It turns out he's Dragon Knight's twin brother all along. Wow. You know, I had theories. I had, you know, since it's like blue and a dragon soul, I thought like maybe he fought he's Jakiro out. and the horns got ripped off because of the remodel, but no. No. You see these guys? <laughs> <bionics? laughs> oh, they literally that? just first banned the first two picks of EG. They didn't take any of the normal bands. They just banned their like, <laughs> oh, oh, this yeah. Oh, it's oh, oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. Warlock Centaur is. It's actually over. It was a hundred percent win rate until the very last series, I think, in NA. This really? double combo. So what, what's so amazing about this particular combo? What Fatal Bonds. Yeah. <laughs> Fatal. Stampede. You lose. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a good it point. It really is good. Warlock it's, has trouble yeah. getting in position to drop Fatal Bonds or the Rock without getting destroyed, and Stampede, yeah. with an Aghanims especially, it completely mitigates that. A lot of but burst it's only 50% mitigation now. What will you do? Oh, what was it before? 60? 60. No, 70. No, it was 60. 60. 60. It was 70 a long time ago. Are we sure? I yes. looked at it like You're talking to the Centaur expert, Grand yes, Grant. Yes, but you're also known for your... Tiny yes. key brain. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> was it? Okay, it's sick. No, it was. It was originally seventy back okay. in the day, but it was just sixty. And now it's fifty. So those Dota two Wikipedia's need to update their pages because mm -hmm. I was yeah. looking at them. Yeah. Get on it, game people. Well, what are you again. doing? Um, I think we're gonna see a Monkey King ban for sure in the second phase. As goes Magnetar. Because Ember just has problems. Oh, maybe they thought it was the Invoker that was the oh, problem. Maybe the this is the game. time, though, Grant, where you put the Ember safe lane. Maybe that's the twist that they'll pull. When you do the Mason, I The Mason Ember? It. The problem is Ember versus Centaur, like, you have to have a lot of help there. If they want to do that. So they've been out three of the heroes that EG picked yeah. now. They're just banning out game one right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And I wouldn't doubt Monkey King, so four of the five. Oh, they might snag them. I think that they're catching on to their band exactly. strat right here. You think on it, if you don't play that hero, like Monkey King, it seems really good in good hands, but if you haven't played it, like the movement Zai was exuding, I just want to use that word, it was insane. Ooh. Yeah. Oh my, great word. <laughs> Thank you. Grant's right. Donka. <laughs> Shout out right, to Pimp. The, the, <laughs> so, uh, Slax's favorite counter to Monkey King is. Techies, which you can't pick. What do you no, guys? No, no, that's not. I thought best. sniper was a good one. No, the answer is disruptor. Is the best counter to Monkey King, okay. better than Techies. His Q oh, tracks him in the trees, and if you glimpse Monkey King after he ults, he just cancels the ult. It's incredible. Wow. It's amazing. And well, then, okay. I like Spirit Breaker. Timber saw. Timber I think saw you can't have a timber saw. Dazzle is disruptor. Decent. Timber saw is garbage. He gets shit on in lane by Monkey King hard. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds yep. remaining. But, uh, Real hard. He can go right click for right click with him. Yeah. Monkey more. King can. More. Well, not even worried <laughs> about Night Monkey Stalker King. Agonims. Well, Easy. Okay, on. that's also quite good. Oh, there there it is. Beastmaster. Okay. Beastmaster is actually. You made a mistake. <laughs> you See, had one chance. Yeah. And what Slax <laughs> was saying, like disruptor. The problem is you can't run Dazzle Disruptor. I think Cold did that versus Onyx, and they just lost because it's, yeah, it's Dazzle. Just not you're good. just like you don't do enough. He has his little Guys. stick, and he has his little. What does he even do when he attacks Disruptor? Nothing. He does a lot. Well, I mean, like, great hero. Is it a lightning bolt or what's he throwing? Disruptor. Yeah, yeah he just a beam. He, he stores some lightning in his hammer, and he just launches oh. it out. So I think it's Zeus time for some enemies? some Bulba Beastmaster guys. It's thunder. Bring it back from the dead. Hey, there's another one. Beastmaster against Monkey King. You put the little bird above. It's not about finding Monkey King. You could see him about to kill all of you. 
It's, that's <laughs> not the problem. The problem is how do you stop him kill from you. killing all of you? I mean, well, wards are also good at seeing Monkey King. Well, they're not, though, because well, wards don't see over right, trees. Right. But Tinker wards do. Oh! oh! Wow, Suns fan. You can uh, use Tree and Protector, tr Eyes of the Forest. Ooh. Yes, oh. just wait 30 minutes in the game after you've already lost <laughs> to counter Monkey King. <laughs> Got yeah, him. Exactly. I'm saying f seeing Monkey King isn't the issue. Controlling Monkey King is the issue. And nobody's better uh, at that uh, than Disruptor, baby. He's the one. Yeah, Disruptor's good. I still think Beastmaster is probably the hardest counter, though. Because yeah, you can see him and control him. That's and true. And you can cut down the trees. Mm -hmm. You can see yeah. him. You can yeah. yell at him. But then you have to play Beastmaster, so that sucks. But that's, yeah. that's Bulba's best hero of all time. Of course. Yeah. Can but you? But already with the Dazzle Ember, like you want to do a more push lineup, and then you just get like Ember with a Beastmaster. You're like, oh. No. Oh. What I, have we I done? Just, okay. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the opening. I mean, Dazzle Ember. I. Why are they first picking Ember? Why would they? Would any that's team first pick Dazzle that wanted to win a game? I don't. I was know. going more with Ember, but Dazzle, yeah. That's sure. It just. Why first pick Ember? I'm just. Ten seconds I don't like remaining. that. He's a strong hero. Yeah. <laughs> but at least Silencer's gone now, so the Atos, just the Glow Wats go. Now they have Slardar. We saw uh, Demon actually played a, a really good Slardar in that last series versus Complexity. So yeah. hopefully, see another one. Now there's the, the Venge, oh. so it's going to be Core oh. Venge. Oh. Very like. Oh, yeah, has to be. It's Monkey King Warlock support. Arteezy so Venge. And so now. EG can just set up for their last pick. They're like, we have a Monkey King roaming middle. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Ember Spirit almost 95%. No Invoker, but what do they want to pick? Ten they just set up. Guys, I just have to say, the Beastmaster is so good. You know why? <laughs> what was that? Five Necronomicon got a huge buff. What? Five second less cooldown. Oh! It's godly. So it's going to be Dark Seer. Core. <laughs> Almost 100% uh, uptime. So vacuum <laughs> With refresher. Is now, vacuum is now a 32 second cooldown. It's not bad. That breaks trees. That is pretty good. Okay. Well, but there's a Dark Seer, so. They will not take heed to your advice. Instead, they take the Lawn Mower. Lawn Mower. Ion Shell with the Flame Guard. Ah. The, the double DOT. Oh. Ember can just I mow them down. Eh, I don't think it's that great, though. Yeah, that's not going to be no. good. <laughs> it, it used to be cool. It's more of Slardar Darkseer. I mean, at least they can dominate, like, the offlane, possibly. I mean, Darkseer is just a shit pick against Monkey King because the whole point of having the ball against a melee hero is that they get hurt by it. His range is so far when he's right-clicking. I don't even think the ball hits him. It's fucking yeah, disgusting. True. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> How are they going to do anything in this game? They also have three Versus. melee heroes against Monkey King Centaur War. They have oh, four melee okay. heroes. Jesus. That is Mason's best hero, though. Will it be the Arcana, though? That's the question. Oh, oh what if he, he has a split cheap, mask know. and there's a <laughs> dragon <laughs> inside? <laughs> yeah, maybe oh, their shit. strategy is to confuse the enemy. They might think it's PA or some other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even though they see it on the picture and like, but what if it's PA you in game? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> next level mind games there, Suns fan. It's like <laughs> You know, I thought of an item that did that. What do you think about this item, Grant? It's called Transmognifier. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the Agonim's game. <laughs> the Ags! Nice. Did you know... Jesus. Nice. I think what you're bringing up is Morphling's old ultimate used to made so you could show yourself as being on the other team. This was like super early Dota 1. No, no. no his, his, he, you buy like an item for 10k and you become another hero. That's his you idea. You can choose another hero and you can be that hero for 30 seconds with no items. Just all their <laughs> abilities. What do you think? That's why. Great. Sounds <laughs> like great item. Wait, wait. Could you, can item. could you cancel it anytime? So you become it for thirty cents, but can you right click the buff off so you yeah. change? Okay. Yeah. That'd be if you have enough gold where you can turn to silencer, cast global, <laughs> click off. Now you're your hero. That's not terrible. <laughs> this hate? It's super light game. It's like an alchemist. Though. Trags magnifier. Look yes. for it in the next. So well, we have an alchemist. Does anyone have faith in Onyx's game? I feel no, like they're God. just no, out drafted. Oh God, no. Jesus. Like warlock, amazing against heavy melee. Centaur, amazing against heavy melee. Alchemist. You've got Acid Spray, amazing against Heavy Melee, it, Monkey King. They have less pressure on the middle lane now because, I mean, Alchemist doesn't have kill potential at all early. True. Even with, like, a Monkey King. So Ember's getting a little more farm, but, I mean, this Alchemist. Did Meepo not get not Meepo get was not touched this game, not banned well, or Well, because they're first picking Ember, so you'd have to commit Mason on the Ember and then, like, you don't want to first pick a safe lane Ember. I feel they're just yeah. showing too much in their first two picks on Onyx, and it's hurting them. You guys are missing the real strat here is the Ags Monkey King. What does that do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> but it gives them stats. 
Yes. It does ah. give You're missing stats. the real strat, which is they're going to have the Dark Seer be the hard carry. Plus 25 attack oh. speed, get some damage items on them. They're going to give an eggs to the bench. Hell it's yeah. It's a Moonshard oh. game, guys. Maybe we'll see that. Moonshard, that's right. The Alk Global Moonshard. Wait, is it actually so you just click Moonshard on someone anywhere on the map and gives it to them? Yeah. By oh. Can you give it light. to enemies? That's the real what, question. Can you? <laughs> yes, it removes the attack <laughs> speed. Oh my God, the <laughs> mod game. Sick. All right, can we go? <laughs> here we go. Hell We've got here. Mott and Brax once again for game number two of Onyx versus EG. Well, Brax, you heard. Uh, I think the panel had literally no faith in Onyx whatsoever. I, it might be the Monkey King. It might be another number of reasons. But how do you feel? Do 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 Onyx have a chance here, Brax, or is this game already over for them? They definitely have a chance, man. The game just started. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to get you to say some crazy stuff. <laughs> I actually don't think Onyx's draft is that bad. They have a lot of melees, but Warlock's one of those heroes that uh, he needs time, right? He does. Yes. Like, um, he doesn't deal that well with heroes like Ember and Darkseer running at you. Because right. when Ember, like, jumps you, you don't, like, want to solo rock this dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, once people, like, really close in on you and get on top of you, unless you're, like, in the back lines or whatever, it's not, uh, he doesn't seem that strong. They do have a lot of gap close, too, especially when they get the blink dagger on Slaughter. So, Crit needs to be careful with his positioning. One thing I wanted to ask you, I felt like a lot of the reason they punished Abed so heavily last game was because they had Sumail and then Zai Ganking did. Can they still do that with an Alchemist? Or, or is this something that they kind of have to just wait a little bit before they can start really harassing Abed? It definitely won't be the same as last game. Or there's like an extremely high chance to kill him. Right. They have much less kill pressure here with the Alchemist and Monkey King. But you know, uh, Ember does tank a lot of acid spray damage. Yes. Is this gonna happen every game where Zai just like sits here and waits for the courier over the trees? I mean, how like <laughs> can he even use like they they're using the courier now? This might actually be the best thing for them because Zai is nowhere near the mid lane. And they're already sending it around the opposite direction just to make sure that there's nobody. I think they know where Zai is. They know that he's towards the top part of the map. And he actually decided not to wait for the courier this time. Answer your question. Instead, I like the top. way um, EG choose to lane when they have Monkey King. They know that like uh, he wants to prioritize like the roaming role. So EG set themselves up in a way that even if uh, Onyx decided to go for like that aggro or like dual lane or whatever, mm. that um, they're already ready for it. Yeah. So Universe might have, he might not have the easiest time top lane in terms of getting CS or even experience, but they will actually give bottom a lot more room to work with. You can already see Crit Shadow running, but he's losing this battle between him and Bulba. Bulba will back up, head back into lane. Zai is all over the place already, and we talked about how he's one of the fastest heroes to move, you know, across the map, and he's already doing so. He's, he's heading back towards mid, looking maybe to jump on this Ember Spirit. But again, Abed should be relatively safe considering Smell. They don't have the most kill power. However, Bulba might get caught. RTZ coming in. He has the magic missile. Bulba has no mana for a surge. Actually, it gets fogged. He can't magic missile in time. Back towards mid. Abed's going to be able to make it out just fine. Bulba's going to salve up, so now he's going to surge himself away. Now he's completely out of mana. The magic missile is super long range, but they have no way of dealing with him. Meanwhile, Zai is still harassing Abed mid, and uh, he really can't walk up and get CS. Luckily, the wave is pushing in, and he'll be able to find some farm at least. I don't know how much... They can't really... Like, Slaughter can help mid a little bit, but it doesn't feel like it does very much. You know what I mean? It's right. like... It's it's really weird. Look at this monkey man. He's in front of two heroes. He just hops onto a tree. They can't <laughs> See you touch guys him. later. I don't know what's going on. I mean... <laughs> he's one of the most elusive. He's actually gonna help try to take Bulba down, but... He doesn't have his stun. Bulba can surge himself away. They are just making sure he's out of this lane. Even if Zai doesn't get anything, like, experience-wise, he's still doing his job in, like, making Onyx oh, think, okay, where are these guys? Where are they going to be positioned? Am I going to be safe where I am currently? Oh, they're going to have to send the courier the long way around because they know where Zai is. By the way, this, this ward is, is going to see this courier, too. This courier does not look safe. Can he still turn into a tree? There's no way he can he's get around. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a tree. Don't move. Slaughter's coming. All right, hide. <laughs> <laughs> got him. <laughs> oh my god. I think Demon saw him though at the end. This is great, man. Is I still on the hunt for this courier? This man. courier is just, it's going every direction. It's almost three minutes though, Brax. Don't worry, it's gonna be flying in a moment here. This is like the courier's worst nightmare. This is ten times worse than Bounty Hunter and Ricky. <laughs> Can you imagine that courier just like understanding what's happening? Oh god, no. Get me out of here. Yeah, he's gonna fly now. He's safe. 
But perhaps Abed is not. There's the Primal Spring coming out. Still, they don't really have much to stun him with. They don't have his Boundless Strike. Abed pops the Flame Guard, and Zai needs to be careful. Still taking some damage. Zai's going to try to turn around here. He's dead, Slide of Fist. Abed turns it around. And again, Zai dies in the mid later early on. Uh, sort of not really doing the best that he can there. Just getting caught out. I think they wanted to be aggressive. But again, it's an Alchemist early on. And uh, they don't really have a, any way of locking Abed down here. Well, that sucks. But again, we saw Zaya die early on last game, too. It's not the worst thing in the world. He's already back top, by the way. But uh, this is a much better start at the Grax for, for Onyx than um, last game was. Yeah, definitely. It really, uh, last game, they just couldn't help their mid at all. No. It felt like, right? And now there's much less kill pressure, but, you know, Sumail is still free farming big time. Yeah, that's going to be the tough thing. Slowing down the Alchemist is not going to be an easy task this game, but, uh, let's see. Demon. Get it. Sumail actually baited that out for some reason. I think he was trying to make sure he could get the most out of the regen, but instead, he's actually going to get it canceled. Doesn't lose that much out of it. Zai's not able to find anything early on in this game. Still jumping around. What's the farm looking like? Bulba's got 14 CS. Meanwhile, RTZ down bottom is 18. Up top, Mason is 21. And then, obviously, we talked about the Alchemist mid with 25. Here comes Zai down bottom. Demon is nearby. We'll see if they can try to find something here. Magic Missile is ready to go. It's level 2. Wave of Terror and Vengeance are up as well. And I'm not sure. I, yep, they, they scouted out Zai with that Observer Ward. And he's not going to go for Demon. So, they know. They are safe for now. Alright. What else is Mason got? Level 4. So, I mean, it seems like... Again, Onyx are having a much better start, but do you think EG is going to be aggressive when they get this this Centaur level six? And are Onyx going to be ready for that pressure early on in this game, or do they need to wait a little bit? Further? Um, so Onyx is the ones that need to be playing aggressive. They need to like invade Alchemist jungle, prevent him from free farming, just like they're doing right now. Yeah, they're going to find some mail. Slytherin Crush is available. This could be a huge kill. He doesn't have his level six. He's going to buy out. He's going to try to juke and drive, but I think he's done. Bulba will get the kill. That is a huge kill for them, slowing down the Alchemist as much as they possibly can. Crit will walk in. By the way, Crit's only level 2. He's going to drop the Fatal Bond, but they're chasing after two completely different heroes. Magic Missile's available. They do it right as the Surge comes out with one more auto attack. They will get Zai the kill, so they turn it around at the very least. But again, they lose the Alchemist because of it. Yeah, top lane, they uh, make an aggressive play on the Centaur, and Universe TPs up, but... um. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was not expecting the uh, the Dazzle heal, actually. Mason would have killed him if he was spent. He lived with, like, 50 HP there. Yeah. And they're at least getting some room for Mason to work with and, and try to pressure top. Meanwhile, the Monkey Man is up here. He will not find the bounty run as Mason picks it up. And they get the Tier 1 Tower top lane. So just like that, this aggressive dual lane slash aggressive trial lane works out for Onyx in terms of getting some farm and getting a tower. And... I mean, they gotta be pressure. They gotta pressure here in order to slow down Sumail as much as possible. Well, oh, Sumail's going for the uh, treads build. Yeah, seen this more and more now. Remnant in. Abed's gonna find our TZ TP out in time. Yes, Bulba didn't have that. He doesn't have it skilled up. Very good try, but RTZ is gonna be fine. He also has the Shadow Word too. Going for Helm of the Dominator, and okay. Yeah, the tread build is interesting. How do you? I mean, I guess it makes you tanky to 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 avoid these ganks early on for the alchemist. He also has his chemical rage up now too. But I imagine we're gonna see another aggressive play here. Maybe another smoke from Onyx. They have one on Demon ready to go. And uh, I gotta say, Zai's impact. This is. I think you asked this question. You know, what what's gonna happen when Zai doesn't get the start that he got last game? And that's exactly the case now. He hasn't had that fast start that we saw in game number one. Right, he's definitely not like snowballing the game, but he still feels like he's in control. Right. Bottom tower is under still tough to deal with. Demon is very far up, and there's a couple heroes chasing him down. Boundless Strike is available. He's going to use it. Universe coming in. They don't have Stampede. He's only level 5. Here comes the Primal Spring. The Tree Dance. The Dream Crush comes out. Demon with the Sprint is still pretty speedy. They actually can't kill him. Zyde is under stun for 15 seconds. And now they're looking to turn this around. Demon, Dubu, as well as Mason coming in. Omni Slash is ready. We're going to Blade Fury of the Wave, though, and just push into the Tier 2 towers. So now Onyx are dictating the pace of this play. Zai about to get caught by Demon. No, he jumps away. The Monkey Man makes it out. They might turn <laughs> this around. It just looks so uh, so silly. 
Yeah, you know, I... when people come from this hops away. Maybe even just mischief as well. That's like one of the silliest spells. Abed in trouble. Good slithering, or rather, uh, searing chains. Shadow Word is up. Acid Spray is there, but he's got a shrine, and they won't chase to the high ground. Abed having a much better game in game number two than in game one. Has 35 CS. Alk is 51, despite him dying. He still has 1,000 gold plus treads, Iron Town. He also has another Quelling Blade on top of the Iron Talon, I just want to point okay. out. So Yeah, that's the, uh, you know, double value. Yeah, it really is. Crit TP will be successful. <laughs> He's actually just farming like crazy. Sumail's going to have Armlet next, too. Meanwhile, top lane, Slytherin Crush, or rather, Stomp from Universe. There's the Slytherin Crush from Demon. Double Age Command as well. He's got Stampede this time. But Onyx are just, they're, they're, they're going through that checklist. They're taking down tower after tower here. The tier one mid will fall. And all of a sudden, Onyx are in a very good position. And they have like, eh, they don't have that much of a lead. I thought it would be much more, but the Alchemist obviously keeping pace and keeping EG in a very good spot. Right, the uh, farm leads are going to be quite deceptive. Yeah. Stampede, Stomp, Slithering. No Slithering to help himself out. Double Edge from Universe. Dubu actually graved himself. That's, yeah, yeah it's a good effort. But Mace is coming in. He has the Omni Slash ready to go. Universe, one more auto attack. He will fall to the Omni. And now Zai just pieces out with the tree dance. So if you auto attack the Monkey King once, it's like Blink Dire, right? It puts right. it on cooldown for some right. time? Yes. Okay. Swap back. Abed caught out. Seder Banisher with the Helm of the Dominator. He has no mana and one more auto attack and RTZ gets the kill. He had mana for Magic Missile with his wand charges, but he won't be able to chase Demon down. He's the only other person down here. So RTZ actually sort of gets a solo kill down bottom on to Abed's uh, Ember Spirit. Very big kill for him and getting him further farmed. And then again, it gives Sumail a lot of uh, room to work with as well. His armlet's almost done. <sighs> All right, Brax. EG's still in a very good position. They're actually setting yeah, up on top of Mason. Uh, they're definitely farming, and uh, Onyx are doing what they need to do. But I don't know if it's going to be enough because it's got to be like they need to farm and take over the map, right? But Alchemist still feels like he can just farm wherever he wants pretty comfortably. Yeah. They're not able to shut him down. They've killed him once. He's still gotten good farm. His armlet's flying out now. And now it becomes that much more diff difficult to bring him down. Onyx might look for a smoke to, to try and kill him. But uh, the smoke is going to break, potentially. Zai going to stun, but still the Flame Guard. He might actually fall here. Remnant, they will get the kill. Monkey King is down. Sumel goes for the TP. He'll make it out. Demon, no way of initiating. No Blink Dagger for Evan Bulba. Doesn't have Vacuum yet either, nor was he close enough to use it if he did. So they will get the Monkey King, but that's the only kill. And again, Sumel still comfortably farming in his own jungle. This is what Onyx needs to do. They're going to push the Tier 2 tower. Like you mentioned, they need to keep the pressure on the map. Let's see. Goblin yep. Strike's going to come out. The healing ward is there. Can they EG's, stop this push? Uh, they definitely cannot stop the push. The only thing that they can hope to do is like uh, pull the creeps off tower by using the Boundless Strike like that. Yeah. And just split pushing. Arteez is hitting bottom tower, pushing with Helm of the Dominator as well. He's not going to get that tower in time. This tier 2 is going to fall. The Glyph is already there for the Radiant team. Good Glyph from the Dyer to keep them there for a bit longer, but Onyx are still positioning themselves. They're going to take this TP back down bottom with Mason. Arteez thought about going, but I think they, they just canceled the TP. No, Boundless Strike wasn't even used, so he just canceled it himself. Decided that he was a little too low in HP to, to fight Arteez bottom lane. So um, Onyx is looking at... They pretty much want to take over the top part of the map, or if they think Alchemist is going to farm, and then they shouldn't have a very hard time securing Roshan, assuming they do it before Alchemist has any real items. Hmm. He does have the uh, Treads armlet, so he's pretty tanky, but once the Radiance comes out, then that's when uh, he becomes really powerful. Yeah. Game gets difficult at that point in time. Really now have to deal with the Alchemist, pushing with the, the Radiance, him being in team fights as well is not going to be easy. Zai, he hasn't really found too much. He's got two kills to his name, but he's looking for Dubu. He actually gets, he just drops down and he's going to go for the Jingu Mastery instead. There's a tier one tower, Primal Spring. He's not going to go for it. He's on the tree, but decides against diving under that tier one tower. Demon coming in, still looking for that blink. He's going to find Sumail. Zai has stun. He's going to jump into the tree lines. Cross of Haze coming out. He's going to just get away. Sumail TP's down to the bottom lane to just try to farm more. He's already got his relic, essentially. He's there. He's 800 gold away, and with uh, an alchemist, that's not far off, considering how quickly he can farm. Oh. All right, you're going to split push down bottom with crit. Still no level 6 for crit. Him and Monkey King, both a little bit lower in experience. What does Abed have? Abed getting close to the Veil. Seems like he's slowed down as well. So, I mean, do you keep 
Onyx seemed like they want to keep pressuring, but what, what do you do when, when Alchemist has the Radiance? Can you still fight into him? Do you, do you want to just split push and make sure he can't get much done or what? So what typically happens against Alchemist is Alchemist continues to farm out of control, but the rest of his team doesn't. So once you uh, take all these towers and get a lot of team gold on uh, your team, you can kind of like build these items that help you sustain against it. Or you'll like have enough farm to where uh, the rest of his team really isn't strong enough to fight with the Alchemist. Like, uh, starter's getting close to blink. Stampede on Bonner. Yeah, Stampede, Magic Missile, no swap needed. It looks like Bulb is going to fall. Zai getting involved in another kill. That's a big pickup for them, and they can continue to push bottom. But also, you know, RTZ, uh, he's been ignored the entire game from Onyx, and I feel like that's a pretty mistake because uh, they do want to, like, apply a lot of pressure to Alchemist, but Vengeful Spirit is not a carry that plays from behind. This hero does not farm very fast at all. He's gonna have his dragon lance pretty soon. Can start getting involved in fights. They should have Golem for crit momentarily. He just needs a couple more creeps to get his experience to level six. I think Gartiz is going to give him that. Just move away so that that crit can lead to level six down bottom. In the meantime, Mason will take down the tier two tower top lane. Again, you know, you would expect with all the towers that Onyx are getting, they might have an advantage, but because of the Alchemist and everybody else, there is a two thousand net worth advantage for EG. This is exactly what you were talking about. The disparity is there. It's real. And uh, it's going to get worse as the game progresses if Onyx can't deal with it. Right. But once we look at the net worth, we can see that all the uh, all of EG's gold advantage is put into the Alchemist, and he can die really quickly before he gets some tank items to the amplified damage and physical damage from the Juggernaut. And uh, you can see like how it affects the team when you're playing like this, right? Uh, Warlock and Monkey King very very low in the net worth. They, they're giving a lot of space for me. It's like a last game, too. Sumail actually had a very big lead on the Invoker. Meanwhile, vacuum back in. Sumail caught out. He has the Chemical Rage up, but here comes the Wukong's command just to make sure he stays alive. Armletaga looking for an unstable concoction. He stuns himself. He couldn't get to Abed in time, but there's the Boundless Strike. They have the damage. He remnants across the river. The Surge is there as well. So they will keep a couple of heroes alive. Abed, if that unstable concoction hits, he might die there. And that's a big kill for, for EG if they can find it. Yep, this is the part of the game that is quite rough. You know, it only takes Alchemist like four minutes of like uncontested free farm to get to his next item from this stage of the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, Onyx do have their Blink Dire and 20 gold on Stardar. They have Aegis. They have their tools ready to go. Darkstreet just finished his mech. But um, it's still difficult to fight head on into Acid Spray, Radiance, and Fatal Bonds. You know, they can like get picks. They're good at like small scrappy fights in a big team fight. I'm, I don't know how it's actually going to go. This is also the go time coming out for EG. They have the stampede. They're going to use it. Stomp comes out. Slide of fist in time. They missed the primal spring. They missed the stomp coming out. And Abed makes it away. Nearly half second before he gets stomped up there. And he's able to just remnant out and stay alive. So EG missed their timing. Stampede now down. They still have Golem. We'll see if they fight this on Onyx's side. They should still have that Aegis. Demon coming in. Blink dagger ready. They're looking for Sumail. Acid spray is there. So they're in crush. They have the shadow word. Preemptively from crit. Stun onto the Juggernaut. Jump in. Stun from Universe. He still has the Aegis, mind you. He's taking a lot of damage. Unstable concoction. Wave of tear. Mech is there. Blade Fury coming out. Slide of Fist Searing Chains onto two. They're pretty tanky here still for EG. Jump in Slither and Crush, but it's only onto the Vengeful Spirit. Mason. He's got Omni Slash, but he doesn't have usage of that spin. He might fall here. Good Shadow Wave coming out. Swap back further. The Vacuum Arteezy is so close to dead and he will fall. They should have the Golem still. They'll drop it. They get the Aegis, but Crit still dies to Abed in the backside. Meanwhile, Bulb is low. One more auto attack. They'll find it. Sumail going down, and they actually get a double kill for Bulba with that wall coming out. They have the Iron Shell 2, and Zai needs to leave. Demon's low. They have everybody so low from Onyx. Auto attack Abed. It didn't go for it. The Golem couldn't find it. He's going to hit Dubu instead. One more auto attack. The Grave comes out in time. A huge fight for Onyx. They played it so well. That age is coming up huge for Onyx in the end. And they threw everything there for EG. They didn't have Stampede. It's up in 10 seconds. The only survivor is going to be Universe in that fight, Brax. Whew. That was, uh, great from Onyx. I mean, it was a really awkward fight, it felt like, you know? It looked like they, like, wanted to back, but they couldn't back because Ember was going to catch one of them, so they felt, like, forced to fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're running from the tower up into the choke up top, Yeah. and then they're just trying to leave, but they're getting run down by a Sardar's Blink, Ember's Chains. Yeah, I don't think they really wanted to use Golem there. And Sumail just got, you're, he was not tanky enough, you you were right, I mean, he needs that other tank item to be able to survive a lot of this damage, too. Yeah, they just kept uh, disabling him, and the weave kept building up. Um, the purge creep was purging off the amplified damage, but it just comes back so quickly. 
Vacuum back, stampede to get RTZ away, so now that's down. And it looks like Onyx, again, after winning that fight, they're going to go in short order and maybe try to push this bottom tier one tower. So, EG still clearly needs some time here, but uh, Onyx are starting to get their next tier of items, and they'll continue to be aggressive now. But, for now, they have 60 seconds without the Golem, and Onyx will go ahead and smoke up. And they're they're not going to be spotted, so they're going to head. They're going to draw a line straight straight into the enemy jungle. Abed will walk up. Zai breaking the smoke. Sick, sick hero. Excellent. Yeah. Pretty uh, pretty dumb. Yeah, but this is. I gotta say, we were looking at that first game. And we were like, okay, well, Zai's playing out of his mind. He's going to get banned for sure. But this game, they've dealt with him very very well. I mean, the positioning from Onyx has been stellar. I mean, they've, they've been able to accomplish a lot just by getting vision of the Monkey King and shutting him down early. So, I gotta say, I was I was a bit surprised when they didn't ban the hero, but it seems to be the right the right choice, at least for now, for Onyx. Yeah, he just didn't really have a place he could go to really uh, pressure. You know what I mean? Mid lane's Alchemist, not the highest kill pressure hero. But uh, he still feels useful, at least, when the Boundless Strike and the Wukong command come about. Yeah, that's tough to fight into, that ultimate. All of the ultimates from EG, if you're fighting into that as Onyx, you need to be careful. Stun's coming out, but it's actually under the Dark Troll Summoner. They missed uh, the stun onto, I believe it was Dubu, or Bulba rather, TPing out to the top lane. Arteezy, Corrosive Haze is up, Demon has Blink ready to go, they're gonna mech as well. Banisher comes out, Swap is there, Stun comes out, Demon was ready for it. Now Mason coming in, he has the Omni Slash, Vacuum back again, Arteezy, TPing, they might be able to survive here. Bash is not gonna be there, Demon doesn't have it skilled up, so it doesn't even matter. And they won't find that kill. Great TP from Arteezy, but down bottom, Universe in trouble. Stun comes out, Abed avoids it with the Fire Remnant activated. Now he's gonna TP into the tree line, they're gonna find it, Dubu. Looks like he's gonna make it his way as well. Can't get the, the stun off from Sumail. He was even channeling the unstable concoction, but he couldn't get into the tree line despite his eyes seeing the TP happening in front of his face. I think when the night vision came out, you know, that nerf to the night vision when he's on trees or whatever, oh, yeah. fogged uh, Sumail. So he like started walking back and forth it's on huge. the uh, dazzle stun at least. Yep, gigantic nerf. Is it enough? Is the question. It seems good so far this game. I mean, we're obviously not seeing, like, uh, Snowballed Monkey King like the last game, mm -hmm. but, like, this is the Monkey King that is probably never really going to get to, like, Basher or any items like that, and he's just gonna be, like, based off Vision and, uh, the stun. But I think that he's still a good enough hero, even just with the, uh, those two things. Abed is playing rather dangerously here on Civil Kakash and Acid Spray coming out. He was just diving onto crit. He didn't know that Zai was there. Surprise! The Monkey King's around again, and that's just... Uh, like aggressive play from Abed that turns into his death and now gives a lot of space to EG all of a sudden. Alright, that death buys uh, EG so much time actually. It's more than just the 35 seconds because now it's difficult for them to get their lanes out as well. Sumil is going to take over the map, push all these lanes back. Let me, let me ask you, Brax. Despite that fight that EG lost earlier, do they seem like they're in that bad of a position? Because they, they look pretty good to me, in all honesty. No, not at all. I think they are doing just fine. Look at how gigantic Sumail is. And uh, this is what I'm talking about with Venge. Like, once uh, your game kind of... She has a hard time keeping up in farm mm. with a lot of these other carries. She doesn't farm anywhere near as fast, but she's very strong at fighting. Like, there's a lot of value in the tear, the aura swap. Do you think she falls off later into the game as it progresses further? Um, only because she doesn't farm as fast. Right. I think that she scales extremely well. Crit, almost caught by Demon. Here comes the Wukong's command. There's the stomp from Universe. Double Edge Mech comes out, but Demon will fall, and they're going to try to find more. Vacuum wall onto four. Well done. Now it's time to leave for EG. They're going to turn on Omni Slash. They blow up Zai. Arteezy's going to fall as well. The Remnant comes through, and Crit might be next. He has Golem. He obviously doesn't want to expend it. He'll probably just fall for this. Flame Guard's going to bring him down. It's a three-for-one exchange. Onyx are there in a moment's notice. And they turn that fight around quickly. Yep, luckily for EG, all the heroes are still low level. They're going to be up pretty soon. Uh, no, I'm, yes. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's actually a good thing. Yeah. I know, it's true, but it's not... Whenever you're looking to that, it's not the greatest thing for EG. But you're right. They they won't lose really much out of this at all. Sumail continues to farm. He's going to have his Octarine core momentarily, but... They need to avoid fights like that. And vacuum Wall is now down. So is Omni Slash, but they're pretty short cooldowns too. Unlike where if EG used Golem, 
you know, they've got some time to work with. But Onyx, their cooldowns are going to be back up in another minute or so. So they can continue to fight if they want. A lot of the times, uh, Alchemist, when he goes for the treads, he'll go back for Boots to travel later to, like, uh, pressure them out. Mm -hmm. Sumail just choosing to tank up. Um... I think either is fine. He might have more items with uh, Boots of Travel, but right. he is ready to fight. You know, he's tankier, he gets to his Manta much quicker, so he's safe on them out. Do you think he needs the lots next, or does he pick up another item instead, sells his Iron Talon and grabs something else? I, I don't I know I think what he'll get it next. after. He'll probably get it after the Octarine. Yeah. And then you just really split up waiting the for um, a Lotus Orb to come out on EG's side against the Amp and Omni Slash, but everyone is extremely far away. Universe still wants to get to his Aghanims. Yeah. There's not going to be a uh, Lotus Orb anytime soon. Yep, smoke on the ward here. Yeah, that's been spotted. That, uh, we'll see what happens. Dubu actually, there's an Observer Ward scouting him out, so he might just get jumped on. He's got Grave. He was not ready for this for some reason. Stomp, I mean, it's better he dies than anybody else, but I think they could have also died. So, right, he was uh, just trying to break the smoke. Yeah. Well, he'll die for it. Now he knows there's a ward there too, more than likely. So there's at least that. It does give some room for Onyx to farm. Let's look at Onyx's items. We haven't talked about them really that much. Mason is going to be picking up what seems to be a Scotty. We just saw Abed pick up a Maelstrom. He has his boots to travel as well. Greaves, Blink Dagger for Bulba now. Dubu's got a uh, Medallion, which will turn into a Solar Crest and a couple hundred gold. So they, they've got the items. Yes, Sumail is going to become difficult to deal with. But uh, it's not like Onyx are in a very bad position because they continue to win fights and find farm. But. Roshan is going to be yeah. the next objective, one likely. If you're EG, do you take that fight at Rosh? Or do you I kind of have to I think, Onyx get it? I think, um, I think if EG can get the Aegis, this game is, like, in the bag. Pretty secure. It'll be extremely hard for Onyx to do much. And I think if Onyx gets Aegis, it's not the end of the world for EG. So tough to, to fight a team like this. Arteezy about to get caught. Sled if this searing chains. He's got a shrine up, but I think they have more than enough damage with Gross Hayes coming out. He'll fall. Mason gets a crit to kill him. And just like that, that leads right into Roche. So I guess it's going to have to be, well, it's not the end of the world for EG now. Unless they decide to buy back on Arteezy, which I'd be shocked. You know, at the uh, pace of the game right now, I don't think EG have the best late game. Just because... Um, Heroes like Warlock and Monkey King, they're never gonna get time to farm or to like scale into the game. You know what I mean? Like the items they have now are probably gonna be what they have. They might have like one more item at the end of the game. You know, Monkey King will have like Solar Crest. Warlock might have like I don't know. He he might have like half an item or something. But um when Ember hits that level 25 and gets the five seconds searing chains, like it's really difficult for Alchemist to deal with this because he doesn't want to build BKB. Are they really gonna fight this, Sumail? There's a yeah, to spray the stun. Actually hits on Bulba. Can they bring him down? There's a double or triple stun coming out from Demon. The vacuum wall comes out. The golem, but it's too late. The Omni Slash is already there. Universe is going to fall. Oh, great initiation from Demon. And now Sumail, he's going to try to fight this. Magic Missile comes out onto Mason. He doesn't have the Aegis. I believe it's on to... Actually, who has it? I think it's still alive. Yeah, Rose is not dead yet. Mason's actually going to fall. Sumail just turns around. Auto attacks Abed now. They don't have the stun. He had it, but he just didn't have the vision in order to get the Magic Missile off. They also have the swap as well. Remnant back, and they're going to shrine up. So it's not going to be a two versus three if they decide to take the fight. Sumail, he's trying to finish this demon coming in. Sumail is very tanky. It's going to be tough to take down. Vacuum back in. Force away from RTZ. Sumail is manning up on Debulba right now. He's got Surge in one. Greaves are back up as well. Unstable concoction. Greaves should get off in time. Two more auto attacks. It's not in time. Surge away. Sumail is still chasing. Decides to cut off pursuit. Instead, Held's elsewhere. The demon's going to be able to make it out. Teepees are coming in. They might actually be able to finish this Roshan all of a sudden. EG take not the greatest fight in the world. Roche getting low, but they're going to try to contest this on Onyx's side. Zai jumping into the ring crush coming out. Golem is not there. It was already used. RTZ still pretty low right now. Zai on the high ground. Going to use that primal spring. Abed trying to jump in. Can't get the Aegis in time. Get stunned up. He'll fall. Sumail finds a huge kill. Chasing further. Stampede is up. Dubu might be the next to be caught here. He's got Grave. He's going to have to use it. He will in time, but still might fall to this. Won't be able to TP out. He doesn't have one. Another auto attack or two will do the job. It's the double edge from Universe that gets it done. Sumail TP's top immediately. And uh, Brax, I think we we see now that Sumail is uh, at maximum peak here. I don't know if they're going to be able to kill this guy anytime soon. All right, this dude's reached his final form, man. Yeah, he really has. Jeez. Might as well call him Golden Freezer because at this point, he is ridiculous. He's going to have AC soon. All of a sudden, this game turns around. Not that they were ever really behind to begin with, but they're getting further and further ahead. 
So even after that fight, you talked about it before Roche happened. Now that EG has the Aegis, do you think it's kind of in the bag for them at this point? I think uh, Sumail's gonna farm his AC. They're gonna draw a line down mid lane. They're gonna go there and they're gonna kill him. <laughs> that's it. That's that's a good that's a good checklist to have, I, I suppose. But vacuum back. Bulba trying to solo his eye. That didn't actually stun him. I don't know if this is the best idea. Bulba, I think. Oh, Abbott's coming in though. His eye will fall. Unstable concoction line to two. The Greaves come out. Sumail trying to man fight again. And Bulba is going to surge himself away. Stop is there. Do they have the damage? Double edge onto Abed. He has actually fire him ready. He's just going to go right into the trees. He's trying to get across the river. He will get low, but they still have the swap ready to go. The Shadow Word and one more auto attack. Do the job. They were still chasing Bulba down bottom with Sumail. He can't quite find it because he's in the trees and he TP's home. But another giant kill for EG. Ugh. <laughs> All right, well. Onyx so let's see chance, but... what can Onyx do to kind of salvage this game. They know the push is coming, you know. They have Aegis, Ember Spirit's dead. Sumail can bots to this wave that's being pushed mid. Um, their best hope at taking some sort of fight right now is to set down a ward preemptively so they can actually get the flank on uh, Warlock and Monkey King and Centaur, you know, all these heroes in the back lines. Centaur is about a thousand gold away from his Ags. I don't imagine they're going to wait for it. I don't feel like they need to. I think Alchemist and Venger are at a strong enough spot where they can just seize the tower pretty safely. Yeah, they have to deal with top first. Dubu, I think you need to run, buddy. Yeah, get out of there. Oh, it's done. Yeah, they found it. Is there any heroes chasing? Medallion, Omni Slash, Zai's gonna die for it. They're looking for more. Crit still has Golem ready, backing back in. Oh, he's done. He is absolutely dead. All of a sudden, they kill two heroes, and now they're already at the tier three tower. EG have to back up and head home, defend this tower. Or Jimmy else might lose cancel uh, Sumil's uh, TP. Yep, this is pretty bad from Onyx. Yeah, two they're heroes here, double edge. You're right. Sumil's still mid now. This tier three tower might be gone in more than that. Warlock will buy back. Running is going to be Sumail. He's still mid. Now RTZ in trouble. He has the Aegis. Shrine will go. They want the tier 3 tower. They get that, and they're going to be in a good position. Mason swap back in. He'll get the tower. The stomp is there. The double edge will fly next. The golem on top. The grave is out in time. He's going to try for the TP. Is it going to be in time? It will be. He makes it home. Dupu might not be so lucky. He makes it out as well. They take the tier 3. They waste the golem on EG's side. All of a sudden, that's a huge fight for Onyx. The stopping of the TP from Sumail. Such a big play for Onyx there. Yeah, they made some fantastic plays, but in the end, it only results in a tier 3 tower. It was fantastic that Mason didn't die there. That was pretty huge, because uh, if he died there, I'm pretty sure EG would just run it straight down mid right now. Their wave's in a good spot. It, it just feels like that every mistake Onyx make, it's just that much closer to the game ending. But EG, they can make all the mistakes, they can lose, you know, so many heroes, but they don't right. ever seem to lose that much for it, just because of how far they have Sumail, and really the rest of the team, too. Even if Sumail's team, even if EG like dies somewhere on the map, Alchemist is always you know farming at over a thousand gold per minute or whatever he's at right now. Yeah, it's almost Something at a ridiculous. Thousand. He also has an axe coming too. He's actually got it on the courier as soon as he gets the point booster. Who's this axe for? Who's this axe going to be for? Rex? For revenge. Yeah, I was thinking that too. The universe already has his crit. Well, that's good, but the revenge axe is going to be huge. Demon, Slytherin Crush, Stampede, Stomp, Double Edge to follow up. There's the Shadow Word, Wave of Terror. Demon just caught on the wrong side of all the right. river. And now it's go time all of a sudden for Onyx. It Stunned is from the trees time. from Zai. Primal Dan. Oh, that was an interesting swap. Still Abed on the low ground. Trying to get up to the high ground. Arteezy still chasing him. Looking for a match missile. He's going to find Dubu, but it's the Stomp instead. And they just blow him away. Yes, they wanted the Ember Spirit, but they'll find two regardless. And it's both supports now down. Man. Yep, Alchemist, great hero. Did not receive any nerfs in the Leah's patch. <laughs> Very surprising, actually. Yeah, he's ready to go. Did they give him the axe? No, it's coming on the courier. All right, well, they have 30 the seconds without Dubu. They have 10 seconds without Demon. This tier 3 tower is gone. And yeah, it looks like there's nothing Onyx can do to really hold yeah, the uh, high ground right now. It's just ridiculous. They did so much in the early game, and they still can't really get anything done in this game. Sumail is still going to work. Chemical Rage is back up with the Octarine Core. They're going to try and they've lost the racks. Vacuum wall, but guess what? RTZ has a BKB and they blow away Demon. RTZ taking some serious damage, however. Mason spin on these slashes done now, so most of the damage is gone. Swap back out. Mason, I believe, is probably dead here. 
Yeah, they, they just, they didn't have the grave ready. Dubu had it, but he just wasn't there in time. Unstable concoction, looking for more. He's gonna stun himself. Man, it's not there in time. Zocterine. Jumps in, stomps, slight of fist from Abed. Well done, still. Magic Missile will be stunned up by the double edge as well, coming out. The grave, and that might actually save his life. He should be able to get back home in time. Slight of fist coming again. But they're just diving, and guess what? It's Zai with a long range stun that gets the kill on Abed. He doesn't have buyback. They're already going for tier four towers here for EG. And it looks like this is going to be game number two for them, Brax. Yeah, this one is looking uh, in the back. It was a bit messier, but, you know, Alchemist games, so they kind of tend to pan out like this sometimes, don't they? You know, one team, like, really can't fight. The other team uh, takes it to them under their towers, looks for the engagements. But uh, in the meantime, Alchemist is still farming. I'm actually really curious to know what the win rate of a last pick Alchemist is. I, it's got to be pretty it's high. It's pretty high, I would imagine. You're absolutely right. I mean, there's just no way they could have dealt with him. They tried, they ganked him once, I believe, in the early game, and then from that point on, he died maybe one more time. If that, yeah, yeah. Sumail is in the, in the fountain, but his mantle illusions are helping him soak it. And they're just going to finish this game off. So game number two in the books, EG one victory away from claiming this best of five. Onyx, while looking good in the early game, it's exactly like you talked about, Brax. It's just the Alchemist became too much to deal with. You know, Onyx showing signs of life. Their early game was actually very good this game, but it just unfortunately was not enough to close out the game against Alchemist.